in. I believe this is week 10 of this weekly live stream uh, at 8.30 p.m. Central Time every Wednesday. So if you happen to be catching this on replay, you know, would love it if you'd join us live. If you're here live, you know, especially shout out to y'all. Thanks for being here. We're going to talk about uh, the Twins system. Uh, prospect list on Fangraphs will be the main topic of conversation. Uh, but as we, we usually have, Unfortunately, these 10 weeks I've had to provide some sort of a lockout update. Um, we got more news. Uh, MLB is canceling games until at least April 14th uh, is, well, at least the word today. You know, it seems like every other day uh, they get a different uh, deadline and a different, uh, you know, set of things that they're laying out that's going to get canceled. So, um, you know, it's just been constant, you know, uh, constant and disappointing. Uh, he Gabriel, thanks for stopping by. I'll get that chat up here in just a second here. We'll kind of let everybody uh, roll in, uh, get some conversation going before we get to that fan graphs list. I'm going to talk about my five biggest uh, surprises reacting to that list. Uh, so that should be fun. Always fun to talk about a list, and especially this one. I think uh, fan graphs went, because uh, they break it down by the future value. I think they went 39 deep on that. It always depends on how many guys you have at a certain rank. So plenty to talk about there. Uh, but just real quick, we're not going to talk about the lockout a bunch at all. Just wanted to mention that cancellation of games is extended until at least April 14th. That impacted the Twins' scheduled home opener, which hadn't been impacted up to this point, uh, unfortunately. Um, you know, again, the, 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 t <laughs> the tone seems to change over really what's canceled, what's not, and what's a deadline and what's not. So... You know, it's hard to, to react to anything too specific. And that's sort of the, you know, the stance that I've taken at this point. You know, there's all of these proposals going out and all of these changes. And, you know, you can't, lots to analyze if you want to. I just don't. <laughs> just being honest. Sorry if that's kind of what you were looking for tonight. Um, that's not, uh, that's not where I'm going with this. Just kind of wanted to get that out there and then say, you know, um, just because Major League Baseball is in a lockout doesn't mean we don't have baseball, thankfully. Doesn't mean we don't have baseball. Um, so I've been really watching lots of college baseball. And again, we'll get to that fan graphs list before too long. Uh, MSP Aviation, thanks for coming back again this week. Matt Webb uh, is asking, are there any Australian prospects in the Twins organization? Um, prospects, you know, when Lewis Thorpe obviously is still in the system, uh, no longer a prospect, though. I can't. What well, I'm, I'm. I feel like I could be forgetting someone, but I can't think of anybody off the top of my head. Um, Lachlan Wells, I don't believe is in the organization any longer. I believe he recently got released. He was a pitcher, so we shall see. Uh, but I said I was. Uh, I've been watching lots of college baseball, and I wanted to share this off the bat. You know, if you're a this is this sums me up perfectly where I'm at right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, the 11.7 uh, college baseball podcast. If you're looking to get into college baseball, like I am right now, I'm not coming, coming at you from like some kind of a uh, expert on this subject. I'm very much a novice when it comes to college baseball, just very much enjoying diving into it. Um, and if that's where you are and you're kind of interested in, in learning some more and kind of keeping up to date, that's a great account to follow on Twitter or a great podcast to listen to. Uh, again, that's the 11.7 podcast. But there was this great the MLB fan looking sad out the window and the college baseball fan, you know, just with a big grin. <laughs> so that's kind of how I've been saying staying sane through all of this. And of course, we do have the minor league uh, season is unimpacted as far as the teams go and most of the players. So, you know, keep that in mind if you're trying to stay optimistic and look forward to baseball. There is baseball still, just because there's not major league baseball. There is still baseball. Um, and actually, there was a game last night that I watched that was played in Minnesota in March. Um, so I wanted to get into some highlights of that real quick. And uh, also kind of trying a new thing here on the stream. So let's see how <laughs> this goes. Again, these are live. So uh, we'll see how this goes. But okay. Yep. Already, already not doing what I wanted it to do. <laughs> let's try that again. <laughs> So the Gophers hosted NDSU at U.S. Bank Stadium last night. And uh, this guy, Jack Simonson for the Bison, was an absolute one-man wrecking crew. He drove in all five of North Dakota State's runs. Here you see 
uh, a bla- bases clearing double for him. And then he hits a home run in the third inning. Uh, both of these hits coming with two outs, so especially that bases clearing double with two outs was huge. That's a blast. That's a that's a deep home run. This is plays as a big park, and he does it again. Jack Simonson again for North Dakota State hitting two home runs out into dead center. Uh, very impressive. And then kind of the pitching performance I pull out of this. It felt like Minnesota was about to come back in the, in the eighth inning. They had two men on, but Joey Danielson, who's a Minnesota native, shut it down, strikes out the side here to end the threat. Uh, so North Dakota State won that game 5-2. to two. Uh, Just kind of wanted to give a little taste there. Uh, and if you're interested in some more college baseball, I'm also covering that some more. You know, My last video on the channel was about that. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, where I am also uh, TF Twins on there, uh, you can check out a lot of college stuff I've been sharing. I'll go ahead and get the uh, chat in here again. Everybody showing up live, thank you so much. Um, let's, uh, let's, uh, before we get into that, again, the main topic of conversation will be the fan twins prospect list, but I want to, let's address a few, uh, questions here, uh, for folks showing up early. The grand does Kepler finally have a good season without the shift. I mean, he's got to be among the short list of the guys who are going to be most positively impacted by that. Um, but like, like I was kind of saying about all this stuff, I'm kind of waiting for the exact details to come out on all of this stuff. You know, we, when you hear, you know, MLB wants to ban the shift and that's kind of what they're moving forward with more than likely that could mean a lot of things, you know, that could mean something as simple as four infielders have to stay on the infield dirt, uh, but they can be anywhere, but you have to have four guys on the dirt, you know, and that, I'm not sure if that's going to have a huge impact um, uh, on Kepler because they'll still have three guys over on that side. Of course, they can't stick the one of them in the outfield, uh, which will have some impact. Um, but if they were to say, you know, the infielders have to stay in these designated areas or, you know, the shortstop has to stay on that side of the bag and the set, you know, and, and they got real specific about it, that could be an impact. But, you know, definitely Kepler stands to be among the uh, biggest beneficiaries of a potential uh, shift change, rule change. Uh, <laughs> Rob Manfrod, yep, I mean, that pretty much that pretty much says it all. Um, yeah, I've become numb to the lockout. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure that I've, I've accepted that they're not going to come back soon, but I'm definitely numb to the lockout, and I'm just sort of at the point where I'm like, just tell me when, <laughs> when there's going to be games. You know, and then I'll start to kind of gear up and get excited from there. But I don't want, you know, it happened again today where people are kind of getting optimistic and thinking, oh, maybe there's going to be, maybe there's going to be agreement today. Luckily, they didn't drag that out till past midnight or whatever that was a couple weeks ago um, and just announced it, announced it recently. But yeah, I'm, I'm numb to the lockout is definitely something I would say uh, as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, uh, he Gabriel. Uh, Aaron Whitefield. I'm. I think he's still in the system, but I could be wrong. Again, I'm. This is probably about as least like up to date. I feel on, on all this stuff, just because you know, with the lockout, there hasn't been anything happening in, in so long. Um, bum, bum, bum. I want. I think he's still in the org, although he might have become a free agent. I'm not sure. Oh, yes. Yeah. So he became a minor league free agent. And I don't think that the twins have brought him back, but he is also from Australia. A uh, good call on that. And there's still probably be some interest in the twins bringing him back, but he may uh, look, look elsewhere, may have better opportunities. We'll see. All right. Okay. So let's get into the main topic of the evening. And you know what? I'll stay on here. So, uh, you know, we're going to fan graphs. We're going to talk about their twins prospect list, but you know, I just wanted to give the shout out that they are looking for some help as uh, they're getting hit by the lockout as well. And really this goes to any of, of, you know, the, uh, the big sites that you use. And as you can see here, I am a fan graphs member uh, having ad free, you know, if you're if you visit fan graphs a lot, you know, there's like anywhere there's there's ads on it. So uh, just kind of giving you a taste of what it looks like ad free and how nice that is before. You know, I figure if I'm going to leech off their content today, we'll <laughs> give them a nice little shout out. And 
little commercial for their membership. Uh, Cause yeah, it, it supports them and yeah, having no ads is, is really nice. Really nice. All right. So again, this is the top prospect list from Fangrass. just came out yesterday, as you can see. Uh, top 39 lifts. They, they don't really put a number where they cut off. It's more of how many guys you have at uh, a certain rating level. Um, and I think it's 35 plus, if I remember correctly. But what we're going to do, I'm not going to go through the whole list here, uh, but I am going to discuss some of my kind of surprises with this list. So first off, I'm just going to have the top 10 here, as you can see. I think I can afford to make this a little bit bigger. There we go. Um, nothing too shocking to me here, although, you know, I have things rated a little differently as, as a lot of other people do. Um, I, I can't feel all that strongly one way or another with a lot of these pitchers in the top 10 in particular. Um, I think I have Winder 10th, and they have him 4th. Um, and I, that doesn't really stick out to me as really crazy. That I do think they're particularly high on Winder um, which is cool and exciting because he's, you know, he's the guy that's most uh, likely to contribute to the, you know, other than Joe Ryan, who's obviously in the, the rotation right now for the twins. Josh Winder could be, you know, he finished last year in AAA. Unfortunately, he got injured, um, but, you know, he's he's throwing, he's healthy. Uh, so there's no reason for him to, to believe he's going to miss time. And you know, he's basically the same age as Joe Ryan. I was actually looking it up. I think they were drafted in the same round of the same draft, actually. <laughs> So uh, just to sort of give you the idea of uh, the time frame that you can expect for Winder. So, uh, again, not, not one of my big surprises, but that was uh, something that stuck out to me. This was uh, surprise number one here, scrolling down. Marco Raya. They have Marco Raya 12th in the system. Uh, if you don't remember, this is a guy the Twins took in the fourth round in 2020. That was the, you know, COVID-impacted season, you know, College season, scouting season, so it was only a five-round draft that year. Um, and the Twins took Marco Rio to Texas in the fourth round. He has not made his professional, you know, minor league professional debut yet in, a, in an official game, but, you know, he's been throwing a lot. And, you know, the reports and people seeing him in fall instructs, uh, he has apparently been really turning heads. <laughs> and this ranking reflects that. Uh, so Marco Raya, 12th in the system. Uh, very impressive. And I think uh, Seth Stowes is also very, I don't know, I don't remember if he's this high on Marco Raya, but he's very high on Marco Raya as well. And I would anticipate that's uh, through some info from uh, some folks in the uh, Twins uh, system. Um, but the thing that kind of struck me with that, and this is sort of my second uh takeaway second surprise of this is maybe not that not just that Ryo's that Raya is that high but he's actually above Chase Petty because you get some evaluators that will sort of prefer certain types of profiles you know maybe they they push uh, higher upside guys further up the rankings uh, younger guys you know maybe riskier but also higher upside um, so, you know, if you'd think, oh, okay, if this publication really likes this guy, you would also expect like Petty to be way higher than normal. No, they actually have Raya above Chase Petty. So again, again, Chase Petty was the Twins first round pick last year. Um, so Marco Raya, who was the fourth round pick two years ago, this kind of shows that um, Fangraphs is at least saying the Twins might have plucked a diamond out of the rough here uh, in Marco Raya and took maybe took advantage of there being less scout. I think he's from a smaller area in Texas, uh, more toward the border. I think if I'm remembering that correctly, you know, my Texas geography isn't great. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, not only just that Marco Rai is that high, but he's that high and he's above Chase Petty on this ranking. Um, so they're really, really high on him, uh, which is super exciting. All right. And he, Gabriel, asking, does Fangrass follow the Scout Max ratings of 80? Yeah, the 20 to 80 scale. Uh, so, in, in, you know, I want to encourage you to go to Fangrass. Again, you know, they they are, you know, 
throwing it out there that they could use some support. So I want you to go there and read up. I'll give you just sort of an example of every player on this list has one of these breakdowns on it, gives you all their info, all of their scouting grades. And these are both present and future and a nice write-up. Um, so we're, we're not going to go through all these on the stream, but I want to encourage you to go uh, check these out. Yeah. So this is one of the more deeper total packages of a, you know, system breakdown. And I think that's why Fangraphs is usually a little slower to get these out than a lot of publications. Uh, they put a ton of work into these. So uh, go and make sure to support them. So again, Marco Raya was the number one kind of surprise for me. Chase Petty is the number two surprise in kind of combination, one, two punch there. Um, and then again, you know, my third one is also going to be a one, two punch. Um, and it's it's encouraging again to see these guys so high. Missile Urbina is still 15th on their list, and Keone Cavaco is still 17th on their list. These are guys who, you know, were both very highly touted. You know, Cavaco obviously a first round draft pick of the Twins, and Urbina was a big uh, international signing for them. Uh, both of them were in Fort Myers, and neither of them really impressed at all. Uh, if you look at their stats, you know, it's easy to move them down. And I think I have Cavaco more in the 20 range and Urbina more like 25. Um, but there were some good points that I've seen made over this offseason um, that I've been trying to take into consideration that both of those guys, you know, they eliminated a, basically a level of the minor leagues uh over the last year, there's no Elizabeth and twins anymore. So that entire, you know, short season league is gone. And maybe these two guys would have played there, you know, if you know, in addition to having the lost 2020 season, Oh, by the way, um, it might've been a bit of a, a bit of a challenge for them to be in low a. And that is, you know, I've mentioned this a lot that that is just a very difficult hitting environment. Uh, down in Fort Myers. It's it's a very pitcher-friendly league, and, you know, if you are already kind of maybe playing catch-up, so to speak, having to also deal with that hitting environment, um, there there are, it does feel like there's good reasons to have sort of a free pass for those guys. And I think it's tough. It's tougher for me personally to do that, and I always try to make sure my rankings are my rankings. So that's why, like Marco Raya, I have him down around thirty. Um, I've not, I've not seen him pitch other than the high school highlights I've seen. <laughs> so, um, you know, obviously seeing some of these reports and some of these rankings, you know, catches catches my eye and uh, makes me think I'm probably low on him. But I'm sort of comfortable with that. Like I'm, I'm totally fine with being the last one through the door on some of these guys. Um, and having them lower. But it's exciting to me when we see them uh, ranked as high as they are on this fan grass list. So that's just a great example of, you know, there's still plenty of reason to be optimistic uh, about about some of these guys, very talented. So that was my number three kind of surprise was the ranking of both Urbina and Cavaco, kind of co comboing them as a one-two punch. Uh, number four was that they had Louis Varlin, 29th. Um, I think I have him right outside of my top 15. And, you know, there's, it's not completely surprising. He is kind of a pop-up prospect, you know, coming out of uh, Concordia St. Paul. Um, very unheralded, you know, guy, but he has really turned himself into a very impressive pitcher. Uh, the Twins, obviously the Twins minor league pitcher of the year last year. And, you know, it's not all about performance. I'm sorry. This is probably really annoying to some people that I'm scrolling, but I do want to pull up his little write-up. Um, so pardon me. So, yeah, it's it's not that, obviously, prospect rankings are going to really reflect um, performance all the time. Uh, so just because a guy was the best performing pitcher in the system doesn't really mean he's going to shoot up prospect lists. Uh, depending on depending on how projectable he is, and you know it, it's fair to say that Varlin was 24 years old and pitching in uh, low and then high A. But if you read this write up, it's like hold on, and this is where a lot of like a uh, prospect analysis can get a little tricky because if you were let's say we take we strip all these rankings, and if you were to just read this write up, 
you'd be like, holy crap, this guy's like a top 10 prospect. Because, <laughs> you know, they mentioned you know, all of his performance. Obviously, they start out, and again, Guy was the Twins minor league pitcher of the year, so we don't really have to go too much into that. Uh, he was tremendous. You know, they mentioned, you know, he's sitting 95 with his fastball and touching 98 in games, um, that he tends to favor his slider at times, throwing it more often than the heater, but his changeup is argu- arguably the better of his secondary. So a good fastball with lots of life. Uh, the slider, which they're, they're not saying it's his best pitch, but he's clearly comfortable throwing it since they say he tends to favor it, sometimes even more than the fastball. So it's a, it's a pitch he has great feel for. But his changeup, so it's all, like I read this, and it sounds to me like, wait a minute, a, a guy touching 98 who's a three-pitch pitcher, what's, what's what, why is he at 29? So I kind of wanted to, to just bring that up. I'm not sure. I, it would be interesting. Um, and, you, and it is fair to point out, as with any list, and I, this is one thing I really appreciate about their list too, is they give the this end column here as future value. Um, so they have Louis Varlin as a 40. So if we're thinking about it, well, maybe they really aren't that different than than my ranking was because, you know, he's just on the bottom end of the 40s. You know, and, may, and maybe if I were to say, well, to me, he's more of on the top end of the 40s or maybe a 40 plus. Really, we're not, even though it looks like we're that different in terms of a number ranking, we're not really all that different in the end. Uh, but I do find ranking prospects is a valuable uh, thing to do because it sort of filters some of that, um, you know, when a scouting report is incredibly glowing and then they're like, yeah, and he's the 29th prospect in the system. <laughs> it sort of helps you uh, kind of shed away some of, okay, what are we talking about here? You know, <laughs> cause like I said, when I hear that profile that they're, they're writing him up, I'm like, Whoa, this is, this guy's going to be a, a top 10 prospect. Um, and then the, Last one I had is another one that they have uh, lower. And actually, it's a guy I kind of want to talk about a little bit. Um, Junior Severino was not among the guys that made uh, their top 39. Um, He's a guy that is a second baseman, third baseman that spent uh, most of last season in Fort Myers, but did get up to Cedar Rapids uh, toward the end of the season. Um, And you may remember that name because he was with the uh, he was originally signed by the Braves, but they had to basically void his contract when they uh, it was discovered that they violated uh, some of the international signing rules, and then the Twins signed him. Um, but you know, one of the things he is mentioned. Let's jump, come back here. They do have they even beyond this thirty nine. Pardon me for messing this up. Uh, but even beyond the thirty nine, they do have an additional, a few additional. Uh, sort of blurbs on on some players too. So I want you to check that out. Severino is mentioned in that. And kind of the thing they mentioned is that the strikeouts are holding him back. Uh, tough to argue with that. 125 strikeouts in 425 plate appearances. But my thing that I'm, I'm a little less concerned about is that comes with a 372 on base percentage, um, which is very solid. So yes, the strikeouts are concerning, when it's a guy who has only been an A ball, you know, it is hard to imagine him solving that problem to much of a degree as he faces more difficult competition. Not impossible. Could happen. But I don't think he's ever going to be like a league average strikeout guy. Uh, so that's certainly a concern. But if his power comes along, um, which, you know, he was only, uh, it was his age 21 season last year. So that's not. That's certainly not out of the question. Um, you know, he had he had 29 doubles and eight home runs. So it's not like he was without power. That's a 430 slugging percentage. And I kind of want to bring him up for a few different reasons. One, um, he is one of those guys that's a great example of the hitting environment being so much different from Fort Myers to Cedar Rapids. Uh, as you can see, he had a 740 OPS during his time with Fort Myers and then a 907 OPS with Cedar Rapids. A 414 on base percentage, a 321 batting average, and a 493 slugging percentage with Cedar Rapids. It was only 35 games, but that really caught my attention late in last year. Um, he was looking really good. Still lots of strikeouts, though. Uh, so can't really completely shake that. Uh, so that's one of the things I want to mention with Severino. 
Um, another one, somebody asked me in the comments who was who were some of the big twins players who are who left unprotected in the rule five draft. Um, and there really there aren't there aren't uh, many that I would think uh, that really stand out. Jordan Gore, who's a relief pitcher, uh, was one of them, but he was just recently converted from shortstop. Um, so that kind of may make you know anytime you're taking a guy in the rule five draft, it, it's uh, it seems unlikely they're going to be able to stick at the major league level. We just have sort of PTSD because Akil Badu and Tyler Wells, who hadn't played in like two years each, both stuck. Badu with the Tigers and Wells with the Orioles. Um, so I understand that there's maybe some concern that the, the Twins are going to let a few more of these guys through the cracks. Severino is one of those guys who's available. Um, but again, since he has you know so many strikeouts and he's only played at high A, it would be unlikely to me to think that a team would take him in the major league portion of the Rule 5 draft. But I did want to mention he's, I think, the best player that the Twins have available um, in the Rule 5 draft. All right. I think I had one more thing I wanted to mention with him, and now I don't remember it. <laughs> um, it it's worth noting that the Rule 5 draft may or may not happen. We don't even know. Um, there, there's nothing official, uh, but that was a topic that was sort of being discussed quite a bit on, on Twitter. I think somebody must have, uh, uh, written that up and done some interviews on whether or not they should, uh, to me, I think they still should have the rule five draft because this is an opportunity for guys to get guys in deep, deep systems that they're kind of buried in that system to get out. Um, but another guy that the twins left unprotected come on now when i zoom in this far we struggle with some stuff there we go uh, this guy steven cruz uh he was also left unprotected he you know as you can see here he only made it as far as high a uh, but he's like six eight and he throws a hundred <laughs> so he's a guy where you could see where the twins wouldn't want to add him to the 40 man roster but at the same time, you know, you know, at some really team that has an empty bullpen, uh, maybe, maybe they would take a guy like that and just be like, hey, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens if it sticks. If we got a free player, otherwise we'll just return them to the Twins. Uh, it's kind of yeah, it's an opportunity to get a free player, so we'll see. All right, I'm gonna leave this up here. And we kind of left it at the 1 through 10. I'll leave the 11 through 22, as you can kind of check that out while I'm talking. But again, I want to encourage you to go check out Fangraphs uh, and give that a look. All right, I'm just kind of catching up with the chat here. All right, nice. And Isaiah's pointing out that uh, they do have, there are opportunities if you happen to be in the Fort Myers area to check out the minor league, um, the minor league uh, spring training that's going on. Again, those those seasons are going to start up. No matter what happens with the lockout, we will have minor league baseball. Um, opening day for AAA is April 5th, and everybody else starts on April 8th. Um, I will be, I think the plan for these shows the next four weeks is probably going to be uh, talk about I think next week. Maybe we'll talk about the saints week after that, uh, Wichita, the wind surge, the double a team. And then the week after that, Cedar Rapids and just kind of do like a minor league preview. Talk about some of the guys who will definitely be playing. You know, if the lockout's still going on, unfortunately, anybody in the 40 man roster will not be playing, uh, which sucks, but still a whole lot of guys who will be uh, playing a lot of guys who are interesting. A lot of guys we're looking forward to seeing on the twins. Uh, we'll be playing. And, uh, you know, just want to kind of throw it out there. If you're jonesing for baseball, mention college baseball. I'll talk about that a little bit more. But also, uh, MILB TV is a thing. Um, if you haven't checked that out before, I think it's a really great value. I do think they're, I think the price got bumped up. I got an email today saying I'm going to be renewed at $50 for the year which again, I think is still 
very reasonable uh, considering what you get. Um, I think it was 40. I, I want to say it was 40 before, but I'm not 100% sure. But it's going up to 50 either way. But again, that's a, for an annual subscription. You get all the Saints games, all the Wind Surge games, all the Colonels games. Uh, well, the Colonels home games. They have, I think they do have a team or two in their league that doesn't broadcast. Um, live, you know, uh, so it's a great. in the Saints and Wichita, they have pro- two of the best quality uh, feeds on there, I think, uh, out of any teams. Cedar Rapids is, you know, not nearly as good. But, again, they're, not every team on their level has a broadcast available. So I'm um, very fortunate that to just to be able to watch those teams. Um, so that is uh, highly recommended. I want to say that before I get to this point. <laughs> however, however, um, I have had – a lot of fun watching college baseball. Um, ESPN Plus, you can get for $7 a month, and you get tons of games through that. Tons of games through that. Um, I also signed up for a Big Ten Plus, which has tons and tons of the Big Ten games. Um, that's 15 bucks a month if you want everything, and I think it, you can get one school for 10 bucks if you want. Um, so, yeah, I've been watching a lot of college baseball. And it is different, you know, and obviously these things, if you love the game of baseball, this this will help scratch your itch. It's, it's not the same. Um, Let me get this off here. I'm I'm not going to tell you it's the same, you know, obviously there are things that are different about all these levels and watching different, you know, there's just things that we're connected to when you, when you see the twins, when when you're watching a twins game, um, you know, it's a different vibe. You have a different connection. Um, it's not all going to be the same, but, uh, I gotta say, man, I'm really enjoying watching college baseball. Um, even though I enjoy the minor leagues a lot too, again, and I, I encourage you if you want to check that out to do so. Um, but in college there, the guys are playing to win. They're playing as a team. There is, it's, it's all that, you know, in any college sport, there's something a bit different to it. Um, basketball, football, baseball has it as well. Um, and I was trying to like put my finger on what, you know, what's, what's the difference. And I think it's part of it is like your team is your team. Um, you're, you're, there's not guys, you know, think about it in minor league baseball, but even in major league baseball, guys are kind of constantly going up and down, even in a season, um, you know, um, you're, you know, and then obviously there's a lot of turnover in season. Uh, sometimes two guys getting released, guys getting traded, Obviously, in colleges, there's that stuff happening. You know, in the off seasons, guys graduate, guys are transferring, things like that. Um, but you know, you are committed to your school, you're committed to your coach, you're committed to your teammates during that time. Obviously, the seasons are shorter, so games there's a lot more riding on each game. Um, and yeah, like I said, the guys are playing to win. Coaches are managing to win too. That's 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 a big thing that's missing in the minor leagues is. And, and, you know, the college teams are trying to develop players as well. You know, that's certainly something they're trying to do. Um, But in the minor leagues, that's paramount. That's more important than winning uh, in the minor leagues. You know, so you'll see you'll see a lot of things that just, you know, kind of strip away that (laughs) it's still competition. Obviously, Uh, guys are trying to show out in the minors. Um, Guys are, you know, trying to get promoted that's the other thing too in the minor leagues nobody wants to be where they are in the minor leagues not a single guy wants to be where they are in the minor leagues you want to be the next spot if you're in triple a you want to be in the majors if you're in double a you want to be in triple a you know so there's there's that thing too um and again i do i do really like minor league uh, baseball but there yeah college it is intense and that is missing from from minor league baseball uh, compared to college, for sure. But yeah, if, you, if you're jonesing for baseball, uh, check out some college baseball. Again, if you kind of feel like you sort of need a Twins rooting interest, uh, hold out. We're going to make it. There will be minor league baseball in early April, even if major league baseball is delayed. Um, you know, unfortunately. You know, it sucks that uh, this is even happening. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm choosing to sort of 
take my usual spring training, you know, enthusiasm. This is this this is one of the most enthusiastic about baseball times of the year for me. <laughs> so I'm channeling that that would usually be, uh, you know, just gobbling up as much information on spring training as I can and following spring training, uh, and really. Uh, putting that into college baseball right now, and then obviously minor league baseball uh, when that comes out. Um, Matt's asking if ML. I, I'm not sure if MILB TV is available internationally. You'd have to check that out. Yeah, I can't can't say. Love the side conversation, by the way. I try to mention that every stream. Um, you know, this is all about kind of just coming together as a community, uh, having kind of a more of a chill uh, environment, having a real loose conversation, and absolutely uh, love seeing you guys talk amongst yourselves as well. <laughs> all the games for the year for 50 bucks, I've got a bone to pick with Bally Sports North. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not easy to get to to get the twins everywhere you know where depending on where you are um, there's not a lot of options and you know it's pricey um as someone who prefers to stream and not have like a contract uh, which I, I did find that i can i can add cable as a month to month it is like twice as much <laughs> as it is as opposed to signing up to a two-year agreement um so yeah uh but it, you can do it but yeah, man, uh, minor league baseball, 50 bucks for the annual subscription. And again, you get all those games for all those teams. And, you know, if you're, if you're even more of a prospect hound, if you just love, maybe you're somebody who's really keyed into all the top 100 prospects, maybe you want to check out Julio Rodriguez or, you know, you can put him on. So it's all, it's all of minor league baseball, the broadcast. Um, yeah, for 50 bucks for the whole year. And again, the college stuff is, is uh, pretty affordable too. Obviously, you know, if you already have, eight streaming services and a cable package or a satellite, all these little add on things get to be a lot. Uh, totally get that. Um, but yeah, if you, if the end of those things are month to month too, that's the thing I I've, uh, I've done this in the past where I had ESPN plus, um, a couple of years back. And then just to sort of in this time, you know, where I'm looking for baseball. And then once the minor league season comes, I dropped it because I wasn't going to watch it anymore. That's why I love, the streaming stuff because you can add and drop it whenever you know if you lose interest and just you know in 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 uh talking about bally sports north in particular they're always changing what it's on so uh, i would be pissed if i did one of those like two-year agreement things and then all of a sudden bally gets dropped or you know the uh, the network changes or something you never know um so frustrating they just it's really, it's so hard to be a Major League Baseball fan in 2022. It's so hard. Uh, it's frustrating, you know. Kind of blew off some steam about the lockout last week, but it's just like every, everything. There's so many hurdles uh, of being a Major League Baseball fan in uh, 2022. Again, it's, it's easier to be a Major League Baseball fan. You know, even though St. Paul, um, you know, is close, there's no blackouts either. Uh, from I think there's there's one team that has a blackout for MILB. They must do their uh, broadcast locally for all the games. It's not any of the Twins affiliates. I don't remember who it is, but there's one. Uh, so you know you all you don't have to worry about the Saints being blocked out if you want to watch them on there. Um, and again, it's a good quality streams for both the Saints and Wichita in particular. On. Ah. Answered Isaiah's question there. Yep, no blackouts. These things can always change. I don't know, but I think uh, for you know, if we're talking about the Saints in particular, for them to have a blackout, they would have to have all their games cover uh, uh, carried by a local TV. They would have to have a local TV deal, by you know, basically. Now I know some of their games are on TV. Uh, they've played some on Bally's and I think some uh, elsewhere, but they. Uh, as far as I know, they were not blacked out last year. As far as I know, they're not going to be blacked out this year. Ah, oh, okay. So Matt's out in Australia. Oh, that's a shame. 
I'm pretty sure I've watched uh, Australian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they they stream their games live on YouTube. Austra Australian baseball. Because uh, I remember I was watching. You know, I mentioned Lachlan Wells earlier, uh, who was a Twins pitching prospect up until this most recent off season. Um, and that's that's like a good sort of side story on MLB I, MLIB TV. Um, I sort of kind of he kind of captured my imagination when he was with the Cedar Rapids. Um, he, he had a great year for them. He was sort of a little kind of scrawny left-handed Australian pitcher. Um, who's, I think he had a sub two ERA for them that year. Um, so really caught my attention. And then, yeah, he's, uh, he's been really good out in Australia, but you know, the loss, I think he had Tommy John and then the lost 2020, uh, season, no minor leagues. Um, and I think he just kind of got lost in the shuffle. Uh, so hopefully his career continues, but. Uh, thanks, E. Gabriel, for the shout out. Some for some reason, when I blow myself up like this, the video gets choppy. I don't know why. Why the difference between that and like having, um, you know, uh, a page up or having sometimes even this these videos. Play that again. You don't you don't need to look at me anymore. <laughs> Here's those North Dakota State, Minnesota highlights again. All right. Well, that was basically what I wanted to cover this week. Uh, mainly just kind of chatting up the surprises on that fan graphs prospect list. Um, again, we're going to keep doing these things as long as, uh, as long as I'm having fun and some of you guys are showing up. I'm going to be discussing, I think we're going to be talking about the St. Paul Saints. Uh, next week and some of the guys in their roster who are not on the 40 man roster. There's a lot of guys in that team. I could see contributing to the Minnesota twins at some point. Um, lot, lots of stuff like that happens to where guys sign a minor league deal and they end up playing, uh, especially uh, relievers. So I think we're going to shut that down and uh, we'll talk again next week. Again, Wednesdays at eight 30 in the meantime, I'll leave you with uh, some of these highlights.